Hi everybody, this is Trevor with Market Delta, and uh, we're in for a real treat today. Uh, Dr. Kepler is going to be speaking about market profile concepts in action. Um, the structure of the webinar will be recorded, so if you miss anything or have to step out, it will be posted back to our website in a day or so. Um, you'll also get an email uh, with a link to it, to the recording, so you can download the recording if you'd like. And um, he'll speak for about a half hour to 45 minutes. There'll be time for questions at the end. We'll open it up for questions. And uh, you'll be able to just type them in. I'll present the questions to him, and uh, he can respond accordingly. We should go about an hour today. So if you're trying to budget your time, we've got about an hour. So with that said, let me turn it over to Dr. Kepler. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll do my quick sound check, and uh, if you can hear me, uh, please uh, acknowledge with the uh, famous letter Y. All right, very good. It looks like uh, at least I'm uh, I'm heard. Um, I'd like to uh, welcome you to today's session and uh, to thank Trevor for giving us uh, an opportunity to do it. And uh, without further ado, let's get into uh, our topic. Uh, before we go too far, we always have to um, address the uh, the disclaimer. So let me do that. All right. This webinar is designed and intended strictly for educational purposes only. It does not recommend, advocate, or urge the buying, selling, or holding of any financial instruments. The presenter does not assume any responsibility whatsoever for the actions of any person viewing or reading the contents of this webinar. The presenter may or may not hold positions in the financial instruments discussed. Trading and investing involve high levels of risk. Future results can be dramatically different from the opinions expressed in this webinar or course. Past performance does not guarantee future performance. This presentation is provided for informational and educational purposes only and does not constitute any type of investment advice. Strategic trading at AIPD Incorporated does not guarantee the accuracy of information or warrant any representations made in this presentation and shall not be held liable for any inaccurate or incomplete information or for any improper or incorrect use of the information contained in the webinar. All right, now that we have uh, finished our disclaimer, we can get into our wonderful topic of applying some of the concepts in market profile. Now, um, market profile is really a world in itself. So we will only really apply some of the very basic and fundamental concepts of profile today, and I will show you how we actually trade using the profile. Uh, first and foremost, I want to tackle what I call the ABCs of applying market profile. A, you have to understand the market structure, the mechanics of the market, before you can even begin to think about applying the market profile. So without these ABCs, you are not going to get very far with market profile. And that's why quite often I find market profile is really very frustrating for people who are new to it because they haven't accomplished the basic ABCs. Once you do, it is remarkable what you can do with the profile. So A, we've got to understand the market structure. We've got to understand the mechanics of how the market is working. Once we have that under our belt, we're ready for B, the next stage, which is really to learn to read the profile chart. Once you understand the, the structure and you are able to read the profile chart, you are now ready to analyze and apply and benefit from the power of the profile. Now, one thing I always like to point out with profile is that the key of the power behind the profile is how it helps us to make better judgments about our trading and with our trading decisions. One thing uh, that not enough traders really, uh, or at least I should say, not enough new traders appreciate is the fact that trading always requires judgment. Market profile really will not change that. 
it can't predict the future for you. But you have to be aware as a trader that nothing will. I don't care what any other software product or any other instructor tells you. No one can really predict the future. And I'll tell you why. For two very simple reasons. The first is the market is subject to any event that could happen anywhere in the world, be it a natural disaster, a political calamity, whatever the issue may be, and no one can really predict uh, what will happen or what might happen, and that will influence the market. So I don't care what any chart looks like, what any signal system, no one can really predict all the events that are happening around the globe with any kind of certainty. Uh, the second reason why uh, nothing will really predict the future for you, it could even be much simpler than a major global event, event impacting the market. Simply a major player could come in and decide to put in some volume either to push the market up or to push the market down. Just a simple decision like that will completely change uh, the dynamics of what's happening in the market. So what is really critical then as a trader is I must stay in tune with what's happening in the market. I must learn to understand the present. And if you are aware of what's happening now, you are a lot more likely to make better decisions and better judgments about how to interact with the market as you see it in the present. And every trader knows that you have to be flexible because even the conditions of that present could change at any instant and consequently you have to respond accordingly. And I will show you some of this now when we get into uh, the application of some of the concepts that we will look at. Before we get into the actual concepts, I want to tell you that I'm going to follow a slightly different path today. Usually people will give you the information and then ask you a quiz. What I'm going to do is actually I'm going to begin by giving you a quiz and through the quiz I want to test your understanding of the concepts that we're going to use and see if at least uh, you have some of these fundamental concepts down and then we will answer them and then we will begin to apply them uh, using the profile. So the first question I'm going to pose to you is about the market auction process. The purpose of the market is to facilitate trade. The marketplace facilitates trade with the dual action process and the market profile displays the outcome of this process. Is this true or is this false? Now, I only see one true. All right, I'm getting some, some more trues here. Good. I haven't seen a false yet. All right. Uh, that's good. That's encouraging. So at least we've got the very fundamental concept down. All market activity takes place within the framework of this auction process. And once you really begin to understand how the auction process works, you are on your way to really applying the market profile effectively. So the key concept about the market uh, auction process is that markets, markets will auction up until there are no more buyers. And then they will reverse down until there are no more sellers. So the auction process is always looking for the opposite of what it finds. And the end of an up auction is basically the beginning of a down auction. That's a very key and important concept to understand when it comes to the profile. Now let's take a look at my second question here. And uh, I, I promised you the questions would not be difficult, but they're very important concepts. Now I want to talk a little bit about what a balanced and an imbalanced market is. So when the market is balanced, basically equal amounts of buying and selling are present. And when the market is imbalanced, the market is either moving higher or lower in order to find an opposite response. During these periods of imbalance, traders should always stay on the sidelines until the market is balanced. What do you think of that statement? True or false? All right, good. So I have some controversy now. I've got some true and I've got some false. <laughs> that's, that's what I like. All right. Uh, this is really a judgment call. Um, and uh, being a professor, I have to give you a hint on answering any question. Any time you see in the uh, in the question itself, oops, uh, in the question itself, if it asks you, um, let's see, where, where I wanted to go back to the question, and uses the phrase "should always stay on the sidelines," 
uh, you know that that's got to be false. When it comes to the market, you always want to stay for, away from these absolute statements. Um, all markets are tradable, and if you want the correct answer, imbalanced markets actually provide some of the best profitable opportunities when traded properly. So I am always really in favor of looking for an imbalanced market, identifying the direction of that market, and taking a trade in the direction of that market, rather than staying out of that market. And you will always find that you are a lot more likely to make money in a directional market than you are in a balanced or a sideways market. So uh, imbalance is a market that's moving directionally, and a balanced market is a market with a limited range. So I want another key concept that we're going to apply uh, in just a little bit here, but I wanted to make sure that you were aware of it. All right, another easy question that I hope everyone will get. Um, I have two, profi two profiles before you, profile A and profile B, and each of them has a different profile pattern. And I'm asking, what does a balanced market tell us about the sentiment of the market? And of course, I'm hoping you are able to identify that profile B is the balanced market. And actually, I gave away the next question, but that's OK. I thought it might help you answer this one. All right. So what does a balanced market tell us about the sentiment in the market? And I see some of the answers here. Bell curve is, not, is, is the balanced market, but it's not a sentiment. All right. Good. I've got A's and D's. Actually, the market is telling us that we are at a point of uncertainty. A balanced market is basically a market where equal amounts of buying and selling are present. The market has found a fair price, and it's rotating around that price, or another term that we will often use uh, in relationship to market profile, it's distributing around that fair price within a very limited or defined value area. Now, see, take a look on profile B here. Um, here's my initial range, the two blue lines that you see, and look at how limited they are relative to profile A. Look at how much of a bigger range a much wider range of movement that I had in that imbalanced market. So when I have uncertainty, no one really knows where the direction is going, so it is more prudent for traders to stay in that tight range around the fair price so that they don't get into trouble. And that's why you see that imbalanced market. Now, this should really help you with uh, question number four. We should sail right through this one. Uh, which of these profile charts displays an imbalanced market? And I think I did give away the uh, imbalanced market, not the balanced, the imbalanced A. Very good. So you all get an A for that, uh, for that question. And now we move on to question number five, the last question that we have and the last key concept we're going to cover. And then we're going to begin applying these wonderful concepts together. All right. For a point of control, on a profile chart, a point of control shows us what? The best price point to enter a trade, the best price point to exit a trade, the best price point where the or the uh, price point where the greatest volume was traded, the price point where the greatest number of TPOs on a profile chart were found. Now, C, I get C's and D's. All right, uh, actually, uh, now, now that you mention it, um, I, should have, I should have had at the top price point of control, and then the answer should have been very obvious right away. And so let me add that and say, OK, I'm, I'm asking about the price point of control rather than the volume point of control. And so for a price point of control, obviously, the answer now would be letter D. So let's take a look here. At answer five, D, the price point where the greatest number of TPOs are, are on a chart profile. And what do we mean by TPOs? Time, price, opportunities. These are these letters that you see. So my point of control on this chart is right here uh, during this uh, balanced market. Uh, it shows 1178.25. That's my point of control for price. There's always another point of control for volume, but I actually didn't show it on this chart. 
I'm just focusing on price at this at this uh, at this point in time. Not that volume point of controls are not important. It's just that uh, I can only cover so many uh, of the key concepts, and I've just selected a few of them uh, that we can apply together. All right. Now that we have answered our questions, let's begin our analysis. I've armed you with some key fundamental concepts about the profile. You at least now know how to distinguish between an imbalanced and a balanced market. And you know that a balanced market uh, basically tells me that there's uncertainty in the market. And the key thing that we have to do when we begin analyzing using the profile, the profile chart, is we have to look at it in context, in context of what is happening in the market. So I've picked uh, seven trading days before you on this chart starting recently back in uh, November of uh, November 21st all the way through November 29th and I want you to sort of take a look at this chart um, and look at the different days we've had some directional some imbalance some balance but pretty much what you are going to see uh, is that you no know, this is for November somebody's asking, asking October this is November uh, these are days in November for the ES mini and you are going to pretty much see that the picture we see in this chart for the number of days, which are really seven days, is really a market that is not moving uh, in a very strong direction one way or the other. So overall, we are moving within a range. And if you actually go back a week or two conceptually, uh, you will remember that that was the period right before the election and right before the FOMC meeting so it really does make a lot of sense that the market uh, wasn't quite sure which way it was going. Does that mean we can't trade the market? No, of course not. But we have to be very careful and very astute when we do that. And let me show you how we begin to trade the day that is going to come after um, 1029. That was the end of the week. So the next day is going to the market will open on Sunday afternoon. All right. Before we begin to look at how we're going to trade, I just wanted you to take a look at the same picture from a traditional perspective, looking at it uh, using candlesticks. I never trade using strictly the profile. I always integrate both my traditional analytical tools with the profile, and that really gives me tremendous leverage. Uh, not only am I able to see everything that every technical anal analyst out there is able to see, but I'm also able to add onto that the power of the profile and the, the key analytical pieces that the profile gives me. So always keep that in mind. You always want to look at both pictures. So we continue here, and I focus even a little bit more on what we're looking at. And even if you look at this picture, from a candlestick, if you know a little bit about candlesticks, what we see here in these seven days is quite a bit of uncertainty. We're seeing a lot of dojis and very small bodied candles. So there's a pending change that's coming and a market of uncertainty. So here's where we were. And now I'm going to begin to think, what do I do on Sunday when the market opens? I would like to be able to place a trade. And we'll take a look at how we're going to approach that. OK, back to our picture again of the entire period that we're looking at. And one thing that I want to highlight for you that's always very important are my points, the price points of control. We talked about those earlier, the price points of control. These are the points at which we had the highest number of TPOs for each of the days. And as the first step in this analytical, uh, simple analy analytical process I'm going to teach you, I want you, first of all, to identify them. And they're very easy to identify because market profile gives us this nice red line. Uh, but not only identify them in terms of location, I want you to be able to identify the. Now that we have this information, we've identified all of our uh, points of control for the past uh, seven days. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very simple calculation. I am going to average my points of control for the past five days, meaning for the entire week, 
and I also am going to do it for the past seven days. Now, I want to begin by telling you there's really nothing magical about five or seven. The key concept that I want to convey to you is that you want to look at things over a period of time. So I could be doing this for an entire month. I could be doing it for just two weeks. Um, I chose simply because this was the period of uncertainty and there was an impending change coming in the market to focus on this. Um, quite often I find that people sort of uh, uh, get stuck and are not flexible with their analysis and so they're always just doing five days and seven days uh, I, and I, I want you to get away from that and that's part of when people do analysis and they really don't understand the whole picture. So having said that, um, I've now come up with an average POC for the week, which was 1179.75, and for the entire seven days, I have 1179.14. So what does that really tell me? Well, it tells me that we're still pretty much, um, in terms of the point of control, pretty close for the week and for the seven days, with a slight uh, favor, if you will, to the upside. We moved a little bit, not much, but a little bit. All right, now we get to the interesting point. And the interesting point is the open. So I'm looking now at the beginning of the week and for the futures, of course, as you are all aware, this starts on Sunday evening or Sunday afternoon and the market opens. And the market now opens at about 1180.5, all right? And I take a look at what happens at the open. Now first, um, I'm one of those people that really likes to trade the open. I find that uh, there are always good opportunities at the open if you've done a careful analysis and, and you have a good understanding of the market. Uh, it allows you some, uh, some tremendous opportunities. So I will share with you one of the uh, tactics or strategies that we use. And take a look with me here. And the first question I'm going to ask you about this particular open, and I'm assuming that everybody can recognize that the market opened right here at about 1180.50. The market dropped down, and we had one TPO at 1180.25, and, and then it jumped back up two TPOs. At this point, without any more information, um, I want your opinion. Is this a bullish open? What, what is your bias now at this open? Are you bullish or um, are you bearish on the market? Okay, very good. Um, I've got some, uh, some bulls and there have been plenty of them in the market, so that sounds great. Now, let me tell you why our analysis tells us that that favors a bullish bias. First of all, we're opening above our weekly POC average. And that's easy to see. We've done the calculation. We're armed with that magic number and we're already above the weekly POC average which is definitely bullish. Now, is that it? No, absolutely not. There's more. Now, what else can we get from our analysis? Not only did we open above our weekly POC average, but we opened above the upper value of the prior session. Now, the green line that you see here is the upper value of the prior session. And so we're even above that. And so far, it looks like it's held in terms of support for us. So, depending on how aggressive you are as a trader, some traders, and I would be one of them, I would be inclined to go ahead and place a bullish trade, a long trade at this point. But um, others that are a little bit more cautious may want to wait a little bit more for more confirmation. Now, let me tell you why I would go ahead, and again, this is a judgment call, why I would be willing to place a trade a long trade at this point. Um, I've established the bullish bias and I am going to place my stop, it's going to be a very tight stop right here at the upper value of the prior session. So I see it as a reasonably safe trade. I, I don't have a very wide stop. If I, I, if I break and, I, and, and things uh, go against me, I don't have that far to fall. All right, continuing right along we, we, with our bullish bias, uh, I am going to enter a trade, but I am now not going to enter the trade right at this point. I want to wait for a little bit more confirmation. I want it to go up a little bit more and then 
to pull me in. And the reason I, I would do that is uh, the, rule of th the rule that I like to use is you have three to one, uh, a ratio of three TPOs to one, one below the open, and I have three TPOs above, and a very strong bullish bias, uh, I might feel comfortable. If I had four TPOs above it, I also would feel even more comfortable. So that my ratio here um, is at about 1181.25 and I can't help myself, I'm going to enter at that point with a bullish uh, trade, and we're going to watch together what happens with it, and remember, I placed my stop at 11.80. All right, now, the key elements of any trade, you decide on your entry, and you use your judgment as to at what point you want to enter, and we've already made one of the three key pillars of a trade, uh, you have to know, first of all, your, uh, the, the entry price, pillar number one. Pillar number two, your stop, and we've decided on that. Pillar number three is really our targets. And I'm going to identify those with you. My first target would be at 1182.50, and very simply, it's the top value or top TPO of the prior session. So that is my first target for the trade. Now. I always use strategies for anything that I'm doing, and rarely do I have a trade with just a single target. My trades usually have multi-targets, and so this trade is not going to be any different. And again, this is where the analysis comes into play. I want my second target, and look where I'm going to pick my second target, the next POC above. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be from the prior day, but wherever that was, and target two from my big chart was 1186.50. So now I've identified target one and target two. Now take a look. I'm going to get my target three. I'm actually going to pick that from the rectangle that I had drawn around my candlesticks, and I'm looking at the top range that we've been moving in as my third target. And just in case we, the, the, the actual top of that range was somewhere around 1192, and being the, uh, the uh, cautious trader that I am, just in case we don't make it, I always give myself a little bit of latitude, and I'm not a very greedy person, so I don't have to quite make it to 1192. I thought 1190 would be a good point for my third target, and another reason I will add to you is because quite often, at round numbers, the tens and the fives, we tend to get a little bit of resistance as we do support. So knowing that from experience, that's how I picked my third target. So now I have my complete three pillars for the trade. I have my stop, I have my entry, and I have my targets. Let's continue on and see how we use uh, the profile uh, to manage our trade as well. Um, I use, uh, several different strategies uh, in terms of uh, my choices for trading, and one of them is what I call the three-stage trade because I have three different targets, and I may typically start with about 10 contracts, and at the first target, I w when I arrive at that target and I make it there, I sell three of my contracts and I move my stop to the point of entry. At this point, I am comfortable because uh, I'm not going to lose in this trade. Uh, once I hit my, and that's why I always pick a very reasonable and a very conservative first target. Now that if we have arrived at that first target and I'm in good shape and I've moved my stop to my entry, that's my break-even point, I am ready for the next target. Hopefully the trade will take me to the second target, and at that point, my midpoint, I sell four of my contracts. And as soon as, as that is accomplished, I also move the stop up to the first target. So now I know that I'm in a winning trade regardless of what happens. I'm beyond the break even. And it allows me the endurance and the intestinal, intestinal fortitude. And trust me, every trader struggles with those issues, especially when you trade with your own money. Uh, you want as much protection in place as you can. And I always sort of... Uh, uh, overcome the greed for, for, the, uh, for the protection. Uh, my final exit, I will leave for the remaining contracts, which will be three left out of the ten, for my third target. Worst case scenario, if I never arrive at that third target, 
I will be taken out at this point at my first target, so I will have had a completely winning trade. Uh, this is my what I call my trade management strategy for this particular type of a trade. Now, the nice thing is at the open, there is tremendous potential, and, and we get very strong moves, and that's why I like to trade the open. Um, so, so let's take a look here, and I've recorded for you what actually happens um, at the open. Okay. Ah. All right. The nice thing is we've hit our first target. Okay. Now, as a trader, I know that I've hit this target and I'm happy now, but I still have a number of contracts outstanding and my stop is down here at 1180. So I want you to know that I don't fall asleep at the wheel. I keep a very close eye and I use the profile to help me. Am I either going to continue in this trade or is something going to happen that is going to cause me to bail out? And what I'm going to look for is what is going to happen at this point? Are we going to hesitate? And how much are we going to hesitate in terms of the drive to the upside? If we start to fall back, I might actually make a decision to take out the remaining uh, seven contracts that I have in this trade, and uh, at least I'll have, you know, I'll have something, uh, not much, but I'll get something if the market begins to hesitate. So even though I have a plan and I have a target and I went through a lot of effort to establish my targets, as a trader, you have to be, uh, you have to be very, very flexible, and you always continually have to be using your judgment. All right. Now, we are going to continue on and see what happens. All right, this is good news for me. Now watch that open drive. What a beautiful open drive. How bullish can you get? Look at that. All right, we're starting to uh, stall a little bit, but not enough for me to worry. And remember now, where's my stop? My stop is back up here at the first target. So I'm still comfortable, and I'm able to develop the stamina to stay in the trade. I'm still in really a winning trade. Now, notice what happens. Things are still moving in my favor and moving my way. And the profile is not giving me any, uh, getting a little bit of a warning sign now because we haven't been able to break up beyond the 1189 level, but since I am still in a winning position, I am willing to stay with it because nothing terribly bearish has occurred yet, and besides, it hasn't taken out my stop. My, my stop ha has moved now up to my second target, so I'm still in the trade. Now, at 1190, I'm actually out of the trade. That's it. Uh, it will it will hit uh, 1189. Okay, now if I look at it here, and it didn't quite make it to 1190 as my target, um, I might actually decide when I see that I have three TPOs and it couldn't go up above, I might go ahead and clip the trade and get out of it at this point and uh, and call it a day. And it's still been a great day uh, or a great trade for me. So the one thing that I continually want to show you is how you are continually looking at the profile and you are analyzing what you see. You are never really on autopilot. Your analysis gives you your plan, but your judgment helps you to manage the trade, whether you're going to stay with it or get out of it. All right. Um, now, if I had let the trade be and I didn't interfere, I wanted to, it to stop me out rather than uh, um, than me getting out. It is actually eventually going to make it to the 1190 point, as you will see in a few in a couple of minutes here.
All right. Okay. So it continues even beyond my 1190 target and keeps going. So, so uh, 1190 was not that unreasonable of a target uh, for us. So if, in fact, we look at this trade and take a look at the results together, uh, we will find that this was a rather um, auspicious trade. Things went well for us. We've met our targets. And we get about 2,550 out of just 10 contracts. Now, I'm not advocating that you always have to trade with uh, 10 contracts. or uh, You always should trade what you can afford to trade. And that's why I'm going to give you another example with just three contracts. So you have one contract at the first target, a second contract for the second target, and a third contract for the third target. So you could, in fact, apply this same trade management uh, strategy and this same approach with just three contracts. And you would have still, considering with just three contracts, you would have still made out quite well uh, using the plan that we had laid out and using the analysis that we had followed. 762.5 is not a bad trade. Usually with a trade like that with three contracts or ten contracts, I am usually done for the day. And that's why I like the open. Um, I don't like to over trade and uh, I am willing to stay in the trade a little bit longer, but I keep mindful of it and I continue to watch and monitor what's happening with it. Now, sometimes it is difficult to uh, uh, really start on the open on Sunday and continue with it because it may take you late into the night. So some other people prefer really to trade the morning open rather than the uh, afternoon open. Those are all personal preferences. Nothing is really uh, uh, etched in concrete. The key thing is these very same concepts that we've just looked at and applied will work for you regardless of the point or the time that you choose to initiate your particular trade. All right. Um, I'm going to quickly sort of uh, conclude my presentation and uh, extend to you a, uh, an offer uh, for a gift certificate if you wish to attend my uh, Market Profile Trading Strategies course. Um, uh, the course really is uh, a combination of uh, some coaching and uh, some instructional time along with some live trading lab sessions. Now, um, I will come back to the slide in a moment, but I want to come back and entertain some of your questions. So let's take a look and see what questions we might have. Um, and Trevor, do you want to read out the questions? Yeah. Or? yeah, if anyone has any questions, just type them in. There may be more than uh, what we can address. We'll do our best. Get them in now. And what I'll do is I'll read the question back uh, to Dr. Kepler, and then he can uh, do his best to answer, answer the question. So um, why don't uh, wait just a minute while the questions come in, then I'll go ahead here. All right, well, here, here's some already. Um, okay. Um, could you describe how you would have traded in a period of balance versus a trend day like we had here? Of, of course, I can describe that uh, for you. Uh, that's a whole other session in, it, in itself. Uh, it's not sort of a, a, a two-minute two description. The approach would, of course, be very different uh, because you have no bullish bias, you have no bearish bias. So uh, again, uh, don't look for one set of rules that will apply in every market and sort of find uh, easy answers that will um, work every, every time. What you need to do is really understand the fundamental concepts and then learn to apply them in the various contexts that the market will present for you. Uh, rather than sort of trying to uh, to always find uh, just one uh, one style or one way to one way to trade. All right. How soon can you tell that a profile is going to be unbalanced? Aha. Uh -huh. That's that's actually a a good a good question. Uh, typically, 
you want to wait for the first 30 minutes or the first hour before you can really get a good feel for whether the, the market is going to be balanced that day or it's going to be imbalanced. And even with that, that changes. So that rule typically, I would say, applies maybe 70%, 70 to 80 percent of the time that within the first hour you could probably identify the high and the low for the day. Uh, you, you will be able to identify the high and the low of the trading day during that first hour. It will be put in uh, on the profile for you. But again, that's not a steadfast rule and, and sometimes uh, uh, things change and we might get a, a day that will keep distributing for most of the day and then all of a sudden towards the end of the day we'll get a double distribution and the market will become imbalanced uh, in one direction or the other. So uh, again, stay away from uh, rules of thumb or being stuck in this, is, this always has to happen this way. What you want to do is to always be analyzing the present. What is happening now and how do I react to it as it's happening? And realize that at any point what is happening now may change and so you always have to be flexible with it. Don't, don't always be sort of stuck with your plan and so committed to it that you lose the flexibility of being able to maneuver with the changes in the market as they occur. The beauty of the profile is the profile is allowing you to really see exactly what is happening in the market as it happens. When we looked at that picture of the candlesticks, let me go back a little bit and uh, show you that slide. Okay, take a look at these candlesticks here. These candlesticks, even though they do give us some valuable information, they really don't give us the valuable information till the end of the day, till the candlestick is complete. And here's where the major difference is between looking at a candlestick for the day and looking at the profile. The profile is telling you what is happening precisely right now at any point inside that candle. And that is very powerful when you understand how to interpret it. All right, here's, here's a good question. Um, earlier, very early on, one of the questions was, uh, you said balance equals uncertainty. Uh, can you relate that to fair price? And okay. also, I know a lot of people think balance, they don't see balance as uncertainty. They maybe see it as certainty, so. Okay, uh, let, me, let me elaborate on that a little bit. It is a question of perspective. Uh, when we say that balance is really uncertainty, the uncertainty we're talking about is directional uncertainty. We really don't have prices moving uh, in a very powerful direction one way or the other. That's the uncertainty that we're talking about. Now, do we know where the fair price is? Absolutely. Uh, and do we see that there's a certainty, if you will, of uh, uh, trading and a rotation around that price? Yes, if that's the certainty you're looking for, then yes, by your definition, that would work. However, if the certainty that we're looking for is a directional uh, movement certainty, it does not exist in a balanced market. It does not exist when we are distributing or rotating around a fair price. The only time we can really see a directional uh, move clearly on the profile is when we have an imbalanced market. I hope that helps clarify uh, that uh, nomenclature for you. Okay. Um, uh, here's a good question. Between the relationship between the POC and the volume POC, the question is if the POC is above the volume POC, does that signal a short bias in your opinion? <laughs> All right. Uh, the, the, okay. The uh, relationship between volume and price is always a very important relationship. And what I'm going to recommend for you is so that you can see it for yourself. I want you to, when you take a look at your profile chart for the next couple of days, I want you to track when the day starts out, where did the volume begin and where did the price begin and, it, and how they moved relative to one another during the day and what happened at the end of the day. And this is going to be the best answer to that question. 
because you will see for yourself that there, there is no, again, no set uh, correlation in stone. It is going to vary from day to day. There are some general principles that I can, I, I can uh, share with you, and I always shy away from doing that because people tend to take them as gospel. Typically, volume leads price. But again, the word is typically. That is not a, uh, a, a rule that's etched in concrete or you can't take that uh, to, to the market every day. Take a look at it for yourself and watch. This is one of the best ways to learn about that relationship. And, uh, and, and don't jump the gun and think that you have it figured out. Aha, the volume is leading, so now I'm, I'm going to go long or go short. Wait, observe, look, and learn. I would have to add that's why you'd want to use the footprint chart, <laughs> but but we're not yeah. talking about that today. That's that's true. I didn't. I uh, that that is a very good point. That is a very good point. Um, next question: uh, What about longer term profiles, uh, daily? I mean, rather, uh, what to say, weekly or monthly versus just the daily? Do you look at those at all? Yes, absolutely. Um, a lot of it depends on what time frame you want to trade and what time frame you are trading. Uh, the profile and the power of the uh, profile works on any time frame, whether you want to be a swing trader or an intraday trader. So uh, absolutely, uh, you, can, you can use it in either time frame and in either context. Uh, the chart you have up here, um, someone's referring to that. He says, he says uh, the MACD is diametrically opposite to the bullish decision at the open. How do you explain this, or is this oh, something you... Oh, I explain you... that very, very easily. Uh, um, indicators are sort of nice to have, but I never base my trading decisions on indicators. Um, there are sort of a, what, what I call, you have to look at a confluence of evidence. First of all, I took you to one of my most powerful analytical t techniques, the profile. And we got our bias from the profile. In addition to that, at the same chart that we're looking at, you have another very, very, uh, uh, another very, very powerful signal that's bullish, and that is take a look at the moving averages. My 20 moving average, which is the blue line, is above the 50, and both of them are pointing up and I have a very nice solid gap in between them. The other thing that you have to keep in mind about the MACD is it has been going through a period of consolidation. And during this consolidation, quite often we have a loss of momentum. And the MACD is a momentum indicator. So we did lose momentum, but that doesn't really tell us anything about a directional bias. And that's why you really never want to base your judgment or trading decision strictly on any one indicator. You want to take a look at the confluence of evidence that you see. I hope that helps you. Yeah, I think that was good. Um, there's a couple questions. Do you confirm your market profile charts with uh, the footprint charts at all in your classes? Yes. Um, at, when I began when I began the session today, I told you that the market profile or the profile is really a world uh, onto its own, that, that there's so much to it and that we couldn't conceivably apply all of the different uh, methods and trading tools and concepts and techniques and so on. So what I wanted to do is really choose some very basic concepts and show how even with these simple and very basic concepts we can use them to make money in the market. Now, uh, there are different levels, and certainly if we take a look at some of the uh, footprint charts and, and the power that they add to the picture that we have, uh, we begin to open up a whole uh, venue of, uh, of other opportunities and, and sort of uh, other analytical uh, decisions that we can extract from, from that information. Um, I always like to keep these brief uh, presentations focused and limited to a few simple concepts. And I find that that helps uh, a lot more people because many uh, there, there are different levels of uh, proficiency in terms of the profile. And um, the more we can show the simplicity, the more likely we are to uh, attract people to the profile rather than, uh, than, than sort of uh, confuse them 
with things that they're not familiar with yet. In the calculation that you use to determine the average POC, I think you'd use seven days. Is seven days a number that you always use, or do you go based on what the consolidation <laughs> right. period has been? Um, I, I, uh, I, I chatted about that a little bit earlier, the five and the seven, and I specifically said uh, don't look at them as sort of gospel or key numbers. Um, the one thing I can easily tell you, is, and, and, and the reason that I happen to have picked them for this particular analysis and this particular session is because of the period that I was looking at, which was the period before the FOMC meeting and so on. So that, ergo, that explains the, uh, seven, the number seven and the five. Now, having, having said that, the five day or the week is a very meaningful POC to look at. Uh, you want to look at your weekly POC and look at the following week where it opens relative to that. Uh, so, so, so uh, uh, you know, there, there's sort of a, a multi-level reasoning behind, uh, behind the argument, but once again, don't always, it's not always about f just five, it's not always just about seven, it is really about the context of what you're looking at and the period that you're looking at. Okay, uh, what profile formations should we look at on an intraday basis that might provide support resistance levels? Okay, um, there are uh, a number of key things that you want to be looking at and if you're going to trade intraday and you have market delta, um, in addition to looking at the day's profile, you definitely want to be incorporating the footprint into your intraday trading and if you're not, you're really missing uh, one of the key or, or one of the most important elements um, of, of the power of the profile and the power of market delta specifically. So you really need to, to be looking at the footprint charts and uh, I always like to say you never want to be looking at just one thing. You want to be looking at a variety of different things so you can make the best judgment that you can. Now, in terms of support and resistance, there are certainly many key uh, uh, pivots or, or uh, numbers that you ought to be looking at on a profile chart, such as the initial value area, the uh, uh, actual value area, the POC, the volume POC. All these are very important for each of the days and the prior days that you're looking at. Okay, uh, there's a few questions I guess around the POC that you just described. Is, uh, is that a price-based five-day POC or a volume-based? The one I used in my example is a price-based. It's the price POC, not the volume POC. Okay, and uh, a couple questions on, uh, is there a PDF of the slides? Will that be made available? Um, I don't have a PDF of the slides, but certainly it would be very easy to uh, to generate one. Um, if you want me to, uh, well, some uh, someone's send asking. Me an email that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll send you a PDF. But the the uh, the actual webinar, the entire webinar, will be archived at Market Delta, so you will have access to looking at it anytime uh, anytime you wish. Yeah, if you join late, we are recording this, and it'll be posted um, probably tomorrow sometime. So you'll get an email with a link for that. Um, if you have any further, any other questions, please type them in. There's a few more here I'll read, but uh, get in any final questions you may have. Um, what about stocks? Uh, does this work on stocks? Somebody's asking that. Uh, that that's, that's a great question, and I have an even greater answer for you. And the answer is absolutely, absolutely works with, uh, with uh, stocks, commodities, and, and any other instrument that you want to look at. The principles are, are the same. What is going to vary quite a bit is the range that you're going to have to look at uh, because depending on the price of the stock or the price of the instrument, uh, sometimes the profile um, will not all fit in, in, the, in, the same, uh, in the same window and so on. So you have to make some adjustments, but in terms of will it work, absolutely yes. Okay. Um, let's see here. I'll post. Someone's asking for your website. I'll go ahead and post that in the 
uh, chat window. Everybody can see that in a second. Um, someone's asking, do you trade the last hour? You mentioned you like the first hour because of movement. What about the last hour? Uh, in all honesty, I stay away from, from the uh, last hour. Um, that's not one of my favorite times to, uh, to trade. Any particular reason? Um, there are a lot of things that happen during the last hour that I would put in the category of surprises. Um, you have all of a sudden, if we've had a short day at some point, um, somebody's going to decide that this is time to cover, and that may completely uh, create a complete different dynamic suddenly uh, in the market. So there are you know, a multitude of things that I've observed that happen towards the end of the day that uh, lend me to sort of uh, shy away from, from, that, uh, from that period. And once again, that's just a personal uh, preference and a personal opinion. I know others that uh, specialize in just trading the last hour of the day. All right, here's a one that just came in. This is a good question. We hear this a lot. Do you, do you look at 24-hour versus day? Do you split the overnight sessions? Do you, which, how do you, what's your preference there? I know it looked like oh. you were showing 24-hour, but... Yes. Um, um, I am a very strong believer in the 24-hour day because you can't pretend like nothing happened uh, when, when something really did. So you have to take a look at the entire picture. And if you don't, it's like having a jigsaw puzzle with a good portion of it missing. The, the puzzle is never really complete. So uh, absolutely, I'm a 24-hour market uh, person, and I always uh, look at that. If you want to split them and uh, sort of get a, uh, an additional perspective, certainly there, there is nothing wrong with that, but completely ignoring it and, and, and not taking a look at what happened during an evening session or the rest of the day is what I would uh, shy away from and certainly frown upon. All right, here's a question. I'm just reading it word for word. Uh, you, said, can, you said you continually monitor the profile for info on making judgments to stay in or get out before you get stopped out. Um, just what are you looking at, or what are you looking for in the profile structure which would inform your exit decisions? Okay. Um, well, one of, the, one of the things that you need to be able to recognize uh, when your TPOs start hitting a uh, resistance point. If you're in a long trade and uh, conversely if you're in a short trade when they hit support. So um, the key concept that I would ask you are you able when you read a a profile chart to identify price rejection and price acceptance points. If if not I will just quickly tell you that if a if you start to see that every time we get to that level we we can never pierce through it you are looking at resistance and uh, the corollary if in fact uh, you see that if we drop to a certain level and we, we're not dropping uh, TPOs below that level after um, two or three different uh, periods then that starts to establish a support level for you. That's just in a, in a nutshell the basics of being able to identify on the chart on a uh, profile chart support and resistance. Okay, there's a question regarding the profile charts you, you were showing. He's asking, were those five-minute uh, TPOs or were those 30 minutes? Those were the 30-minute TPOs. Okay. Now, yeah. certainly when I, when I uh, showed the video, that was a condensed, <laughs> condensed version of the 30-minute uh, uh, TPOs. And uh, that is one of the features that I love about uh, Market Delta. Yeah, that playback is nice. It's a nice yes. feature. Okay, well, um, we're at an hour, so we can wrap it up with that. All um, right. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody that uh, participated with us today. Wish you all the very best of luck trading. And I also want to uh, extend a hearty thanks to Trevor for hosting us. Well, thanks for certainly uh, presenting. Um, I'll get the video out uh, tomorrow. You'll get an email with that. Uh, if you want, uh, you, in case nobody knows, you can get a trial to Market Delta. It's a 30-day trial. Uh, we support a host of 
um, different data sources. Um, many of them you can get a free trial on. Uh, our website is just marketdelta.com. Feel free to visit that. If you have any questions on that, you can reach out to us. Uh, anything regarding the presentation, reach out to Dr. Kepler. Other than that, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, everyone.